Hello, and welcome to Are You Game Night? As you can see, my friends aren't here, and it's not an indictment on me, all right? It's because we're playing a solo board game today. And since it's spooky season, I figure we could finally bust out Final Girl. Now, I was first made aware of Final Girl last year at Gen Con when I got to go to the Van Ryder booth and interview AJ Porfirio, one of the co-creators of this game. And ever since that interview, I've been itching to play it. I gotta say, I like it a lot. The way it works is, you know how in uh, horror movies, how there's always like one Final Girl left standing versus the killer? Well, this is that scenario. But which horror movie you're asking, that depends. You see, you buy the core box and then you can get Camp Happy Trails or Sacred Groves or Carnival of Blood or Maple Lane or Creech Manor. And that's just season one. Season two was just released earlier this year and it should be up on areyougame.com. I will post a link in the description. Now, the way this works is, like I said, you buy the core box and then you purchase each of these movies separately. And what each of these boxes contains is two final girls that you can play as, one villain, and one location. And what's really cool about this game is that these are modular. So let's say you wanna play this final girl at the carnival, but being chased by Dr. Fright. You can do that. And it's fun because you can see all the different horror movies that went into influencing these. Like for instance, this uh, the villain in the Camp Happy Trails, Camp Happy Trails, Jason, anyone? He's a big lumbering, guy who is just like silent, slow stalking killer, S classic slasher. However, Dr. Fright is more of a Freddy Krueger guy. He haunts your dreams. And each villain has different mechanics that changes the game completely. And each location has different things as well. Me personally, I have always been a big fan of Halloween, the movie, not the, well, also the holiday, but especially the movie, Halloween, with Michael Myers was always my favorite growing up. So I'm going to try to recreate Halloween in Final Girl. So I'm gonna bust out the core box. I'm going to take Hans, the slow lumbering stalker from Camp Happy Trails, and I'm going to put him in Maple Lane. So instead of stalking campers in a, in a camp, he's gonna be stalking people in a neighborhood, just like the film Halloween. And, since I'm playing it here in the studio and we have access to the warehouse that has everything that we sell on areyougame.com, I'm gonna go full on out. I'm gonna use the playmat set and I'm even gonna bust out some miniatures so that uh, I can really immerse myself in the game. But there is a bit of a setup, so instead of boring you with all that, let's just go ahead and... Wow, that was fast. <laughs> no, it wasn't. In reality, it took a while. All right, so this is our setup for our makeshift Halloween playthrough of Final Girl. We've got the character of Hans the Butcher, who is our silent stalker, and it's got it all set up. We've got the two cards. He's got 12 health. So we put 11 of these guys out, plus the final uh, health piece. Uh, you know how in horror movies, there's always like a, a jump scare at the end where like, oh wait, he's not actually dead. Well, we'll find out if that's the case. In the end, when he loses his last bit of life, or we lose our last bit of life, we'll flip that over and find out if we have a little bit of extra life in us. All right, so that's Hans all set up. Oh, wait, and he also needs his little uh, bloodlust token. There we go. That's going to determine how dangerous this guy is. Currently, he only moves one space at a time, but he does two attack damage to us. So that's going to be painful. We are playing as Lori because... Come on, Laurie Strode from Halloween, Jamie Lee Curtis's character. And we've got five health to begin with. And so we've got these four right there. 
as we save victims, we'll get some uh, fun things along the way. And if we save six total victims, then we can flip this over. And then whenever you are in the same space as an enemy and inflict damage, we do extra damage to them. So that's pretty cool. And then each additional victim that we save, we'll also get a little extra time. Time is spent to purchase your actions at the end of your action round. There is a preparing round, or a preparation round, in that you get to spend your remaining time that you have on these. And you'll see in the corner there, each cost a certain amount of time. And we also have all of our Maple Lane tokens placed right there. We've got our event tokens for Maple Lane right there. I went ahead and took all of the Hans the Butcher Terror cards and the Maple Lane Terror cards and I mixed them all together, dealt out 10 here. So those will be our Terror cards. Uh, and then we've got our items set up. There are four quadrants. There's the Northwest, the Southwest, the Southeast, and the Northeast. Any houses, you can search any of the houses in those areas. When you search them, you can pull out an item, or depending on how well you search it, you can pull out two items and choose which one you want to take. In Maple Lane, you get an extra card. Uh, we have the Convince card. That's because uh, you're in a neighborhood and you can't just walk into random people's houses. They don't, uh, they don't like that, so you have to convince them to let you in to search their house or to get them out of there because that's the point, is you want to save as many victims as you can and also defeat the evil villain. Now, to set up the game, to finish setting up, we've got to flip over the setup card, which will be Maple Lane. Oh, okay, so this, we're basically starting off, put these aside, we are starting off with the killer, and we're using our fun, cool, super detailed miniatures that you can purchase at areyougame.com. And we will place the killer here. And then across from the intersection, we have our little Lori miniature. She's right there. And we're gonna be staring down the killer. Now we also have to put our victims on the board. You'll see there's numbers right there and that determines how many victims are in each house. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay them on their side so that you can kind of see them better. And we've got three victims here in this house. Um, let's see, we've got two victims right here in the intersection between us and Hans. We got another victim here. We've got another victim here. And three more, a small little family living in the Smalley's house. All right, so we've got our victims set up, we've got our characters in place, we've got all of our cards set up, everything is ready to go. We gotta kick this bad boy off with an event. Now, what event is going to start this whole shebang? It's the Friendly Neighbors. Okay, oh, nice, that's a, a good event. Normally, the events can be uh, pretty touch and go. This one is a solid good one. Basically, if anytime we want to convince someone to let us into their house, we get an extra die to roll, which just will make things all that much more easy. So, all right, here we go. To start off our hand, we get all of the zero cost action cards. It's a little hand of six. Not a whole lot of good stuff you can do, especially considering there's a killer two spaces away with two people in between us. Uh, so let's start by, let's just focus, all right? Let's just take a second and focus up here. This will hopefully give us a little extra time, maybe reduce the horror level just a bit so we can all just calm down. We're gonna roll two dice 
because currently our horror level is at four. It starts at four with Hans because he's pretty creepy, but no one's seen him do what he does yet. We want to get it down here so that we can roll three dice for every one of our horror rolls. Uh, however, if it gets a bit too terrifying, we'll only be able to roll one die, which will make things very difficult for us. All right, so I'm going to roll to focus, and we got... Okay, okay. So that's pretty good. We can either lose some time so we won't be able to buy as much stuff, but we can still bring the horror level down a bit. Or, this four roll, we can actually trade in two cards from our, you know, small hand right now to bump that up to a success. Honestly, at this early in the game, I feel like collecting these cards to do something is helpful. Right now, I don't see myself taking a short rest immediately, so I'll go ahead and discard that. And I'm also gonna discard our second focus. Because I think that judging how close he is, things might heat up pretty quickly. Okay, so that becomes a success. With two successes with a focus, our horror level goes down and our time, we get two times. I'm gonna go ahead and try and walk. I'm gonna see if I can't get these two people out of the middle of the street. I don't know what they're doing there, but it's pretty dangerous. So, ooh, okay. So we've got a success and a medium. Ooh. I want to hold on to some of these cards so that I can do something next round. So I'm going to move into this space right here. And I know that seems a little silly to confront the killer right away, but I want to maybe guard these two victims. Hopefully, you know, maybe he doesn't get to move. Uh, I don't know. It's probably a bad idea, but I'm going with it anyway. And hopefully it doesn't bite me in the bottom. On the plus side, you know, we'll make for a shorter video. You guys will watch longer. All right, just move into that space and that is all I'm gonna do on my action turn. I don't have a whole lot I can do, but I do have eight time to spend, so. I'm going to need to get into some houses because I, I, I want to get an item that I can, uh, you know, use. But I also want to be able to help some of the victims. So I'm going to take a convince card. That's going to be one of them. That costs one. So now I have seven. I'd like to search. That brings me down to five. Boom, boom. I'm going to take retaliate just because he's right there and I have a striking suspicion that he's going to stab me or I guess he's got a sledgehammer he's gonna cave in my skull so I'm gonna take a retaliate bump that down four so now I still have one left one two three four still have one left which I will spend on a close call because you never know when you need a close call uh, that puts me at zero. I can't really buy anything else with that. Uh, I've got, let's see how many cards that put my hand out. You have a maximum of 10 cards in your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're good to go. I'm gonna put my dice back there. The last thing, I'm going to take these discarded cards. We can't use that until we've had another preparation round. So I'm gonna set them aside over here so I don't think that I can use them. Now it's time for Hans's turn. Now, first things first, he targets someone. Over here it says he either targets you or one of the victims, and then he attacks them. Luckily, he's not in any space with a victim, so he's not going to attack them just yet. However, now we have to flip over this terror card and find out the very first thing that happens. Ooh, okay, okay. Oh, did you hear what happened on Maple Lane? A lot of things are happening. First, we gotta flip over an event card, okay? Oh no, a fire. 
Uh oh. Okay, this could be bad. So, do you do you smell smoke? That's what it's. Uh, roll a die and place the fire token. Where's the fire token? Let's get that guy out. There it is. Roll a die and place the fire token in. If it's a one through three, it's going in the boyfriend's house, which. I love the boyfriend, but fortunately, no one's home currently. However, if it's a four through a six, it goes into the Smalley's house, and there is a family watching TV in there. And any victims in the house that, uh, or that panic and run into the house, are immediately killed, and you or enemies in the house take one damage. The house may no longer be entered or searched. So, are we going to start the game with a violent fire that kills a family, or is your boyfriend's house gonna burn down and everyone's okay? Unfortunately, this whole family's now dead. So, let's go ahead and put all of them right in here. Uh, now, Luckily, since Hans wasn't the one who started the fire, it was just an electrical fire. Since Hans didn't start it, his bloodlust doesn't go up by three, which would have been very bad. Uh, but those three victims are now gone and out of the game, and that's sad. Now we move on to our next event card, because there's two event cards that happen. Party in the Burbs! Oh boy. Place four new victims in any house that contains at least one victim. If none do, place them in the intersection. There are a lot of houses that have victims in it. Whew. Let's go with this southeast house because Hans is far away from it. Oh boy. All right, so now these guys are partying up. They're having a blast. They don't realize that a vicious, bloodthirsty killer is right outside and down the street. Hopefully they'll figure it out when we run into their house and get them all to evacuate. Whether or not they will, I do not know. And then finally, to resolve this terror card, draw the next terror card. So not only did we start a fire that killed a family, we also started a party that brought a bunch of people here for the fodder. And on top of that, he wants fresh blood. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, he's going to... <laughs> he's going to choose a victim that is closest to him, which would be one of these two that I'm trying to protect here and he's going to walk to them. Now, one boot means that he walks one time, or well, actually, yeah. So one boot means that he'll walk one space. However, there's two boots, so he's going to go two spaces. Doesn't matter, because he only needs to go one. He's gonna walk right up here. I'm sitting here convincing them like, guys, we gotta go, there's a killer. And they're like, no, there isn't. And then it's like one of those classic scenes in a horror movie where someone's like, what are you talking about? And then, like, gets killed from behind. So now this one is dead, and Hans, he's really into it. He's getting that bloodlust, so bloodlust meter's going up one. Whew. Okay, that wasn't fun. So that was it for the killer's phase. Now it's time for the panic phase. This little guy, let's name him Sam. Sam just watched his best friend get bludgeoned with a sledgehammer, and he's freaking out. So, he's going to run. Now, I'm going to roll a die to see which, which way he runs. If I roll a one, he's running that way. If I roll a three or a four, he's running that way. If I roll a two this way, and a five or six, he's going that way. So which way is Sam running off to? A four. He is bolting it over here, and he looks to his left and sees there's a house on fire, and I, I feel bad for Sam at this point. But it's now time for the upkeep phase. First, check your tarot cards. Is there still some available? Yes, there's a 
practically full deck. All right, so we're good on that. We got to move our timer back up to six. Uh, and we don't have any items, but if you do have an item in your hand and some items in your backpack, you can swap them out during this phase. But we don't, so we're good to go. And now it's time to play. All right, it's our turn. We are right there with them. Yeah, 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 we're right there with them. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to, you know what? I feel bad for Sam and we aren't really in a position to do a whole lot. We can do a weak attack against Hans, but if we don't roll real well, we're going to lose some life, or if we roll real bad, we'll just lose our life, or we'll lose a life and end our turn. We don't want that. So, I'm going to walk away. Just walk away. Walk away, walk away. All right. Oh, two sixes, I will take it. Not only are we gonna walk away, but we're gonna go, Sam, Sam. We're gonna run over here. It allows us to move two spaces. So we're gonna move to one and then two, and we're bringing Sam with us. And we are gonna yell, Sam, go get help. The police or someone can help us defeat this, uh, supernatural killer uh police probably won't help anyway so sam is officially saved i feel bad that he lost his best friend but you know what at least he's alive and that's the important thing now we get to place his piece somewhere on our lorry card now we can either move we can place it right here and move the horror level down one which will get us closer to three die which will help us immensely or we can uh, bump up two time, we can move one space, or we can gain a life that won't help us at all right now. So, or we can take an action card that is worth up to, we can pretty much take any of these or another convince, which we already have a search. A sprint wouldn't be bad. It was always good to have a close call. Um, but I'm gonna move the horror level down. Right? I want to get us to a place where we can all breathe and not be freaking out. Okay, so that's the first move. This goes down one because we did uh, walk, which allowed us to move two spaces, but it did take some time to move those spaces. Um, now I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to convince the pitchfork here is in this house. Uh, or wherever I search in this area first, but we're gonna, for story purposes, it's in this house. Uh, we can discard it at any time to prevent the damage from a single attack, but it also, if we attack with it, it gives us an extra attack. However, it is two-handed, so we have to hold it with both of our hands. Um, or down here in the southwest corner, we have a rifle which the rifle cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. You spend a time to make a horror roll and a success you get to deal two damage to Hans, uh, but he has to be uh, within three spaces and on a street. You can't shoot him in the house. Uh, that sounds like a better deal than the pitchfork if I'm being completely honest. So we're gonna try and run into this house. We know they're a gun owner. They've got the Second Amendment flag hanging out, you know, a don't tread on me thing. So we're going to uh, go ahead and play it convince. We're gonna roll two die. However, because we have friendly neighbors, we're going to roll three. Oh, and it was uh, not good. <laughs> because that was so bad, I'm just going to spend two time ugh, on a horror, re-roll my horror roll. Hey, not as bad. All right, so convince, I'll take it. I'll take it. So we just, 
it costs a time, so we're not going to be getting a whole lot. But it, uh, we enter this house. And now once we have entered, we're going to search this house to try and get that gun. All right, so we're going to search, and we can roll two. Put that die right back there. Hopefully we'll get two successes. Aha! Wow, rolling great. Okay, so now we get to take the top two items. There's only three in this whole area. We're gonna take the top two items and choose one of them and then place the other on top face up or underneath face down. All right, so we either have the rifle or Lori's bow. Okay, so. Lori's bow does less damage, however, it works with an attack, and the rifle is not an attack. You just roll, and if you don't get it, then you wasted a shot. Uh, let's see, Lori's bow cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. Oh, okay, so just like the rifle. It costs, uh... oh, okay. So it costs one time to use. Uh, it's got three shots. It only does one damage, but it's got some range, just like the rifle. It says right here, uh, I won nationals with this bow. I never miss, and that's not going to change today. So Lori came from Camp Happy Trails. That's why she's got a bow and arrow. And this card is one of the special secret cards. Each box, if you're clever enough, you can pop this open, and underneath there'll be two little, uh, on either side there is a little dossier. It says, for Sheila's eyes only. That's uh, the other girl from Maple Lane. But for Lori's, it's got Lori's bow, and it'll have a secret item that is just for the character that you're playing as. All right, so the rifle is going to do more damage, but we'll get more chances with Lori's bow, and Lori's bow hits every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Lori's bow, and I'm going to place the rifle right back up on top, face up like I can. Okay, so we've now searched this room. Gonna pop that guy right there so we can't research that house and we can't search the Smalley's house so that rifle is in this house right here it's actually not in the 2A guy's house <laughs> all right so next we have retaliate and weak attack that's all we have left to do so we're going to end our turn right here with uh, Sharon Sharon's inside this house actually so we're chilling in here with Sharon. I don't know why Sharon had our bow and arrow. We, we lent it to her last week, and, or uh, like three months ago, and she still hasn't given it back. It's real frustrating. All right, so now at the end of our turn, we still have two time to spend. I'm going to spend it on sprinting because movement is important. It is now Hans's turn. He's first going to target someone and try and stab them. He can't see anyone, but he knows there's a house party going off in here because that's the closest place that has any victims or us. So he's going to target someone in there. He's going to target this middle one. That's Clarence. He's going to target Clarence. He knows Clarence is hanging out at that house. Uh, he can't stab him because he's you know, far away from him, but that's who he's going for next. And we are going to, uh-oh, place Hans with the farthest target possible. Okay. Okay, boy, all right. The farthest one possible, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, so everyone's about as far away as possible because he's standing in the middle of the board and yeah. So he's going to pick off this person. This is uh, uh, Bill. Bill's home alone 
on a Friday night again. So he's going to head towards Bill, so we're going to place Hans with him. Bam! Bill's uh, just, you know, watching TV, eating a sad, half-frozen uh, dinner. And he's sitting on his couch, and Hans just kind of comes up behind the couch with his sledgehammer. And we're going to bump the horror level up one, because that's what this mask says. And then we're going to draw the next terror card. Here we go. Hans, he wants me. He's always wanted me. Okay. This isn't as bad as it could have been. It's one of those super intense moments, kind of like in Scream, you know, when he's watching the horror movie and Ghostface Killer walks by him. Uh, instead, however, Hans, you know, he creeps up behind Bill, behind the couch, and then I think he has a moment where he feels bad for Bill, and so he walks right on out that house. All right, and uh, so right now, because of this, he's targeting us. He wants us. He wants me. He's always wanted me. So he's going to move twice, which is at a rate of one space at a time. One, two. He's heading for us. And he slashes, but there's no one there, so nothing happens. All right, so that is the end of the killer's phase. Next up, we have the panic phase. And nobody panics. There's nothing to panic about right now. Uh, Sam's gone. You know, Sam's friend died, but Sam's gone, so we don't need to... He's the only one who's panicked so far. They're still partying it up. This family's hanging out. I'm over here with, uh... Oh, no. I shouldn't give them all names, because now I have to keep track of their names. That's Susan? It's Susan now. All right, so we're here with Susan still. Bill's just watching his TV, eating his cold, frozen dinner. All right. <clears throat> and now the upkeep phase, or the, uh, yeah, the upkeep phase, so we're going to bump that back up. We're going to take these bad boys and place them back in play, thank goodness, because we're going to need some cards, so we have some actions to do. There are still tarot cards on the board, so we're still good to go, and yeah, let's do what we're going to do. So now it's our turn, and we are going to first move these out of the way, so that those can go back into play again. Uh, and then we're going to grab... Oh wait, no, I can't grab those yet. So we're going to sprint out the door. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's no good. I want to give up my retaliate just for nothing. Okay, well, we're going to move one space. We're going to leave... Here, and we're going to take them with us. That's something good, all right? So we take them with us and save them, all right? There, Susan, get out of here. Go find Sam. Go find health, all right? And we're going to be losing two time, but we need that time. So I'm going to put it right there. So even though our time goes down to, it's going to go back up to because we did save someone. However, our turn is over and... I don't know, we scraped our knee or something. We we hit our hip against the counter as we ran out the door. That's such frustrating. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to take that. Now that is the end of our action. We cannot take any more actions. However, we can spend some actions. Now these are all back in... No, these aren't back in play. These are still all back in play, though. All right, um, we're going to take all of these because we need those. And then we have six time. What do we have right now? So we've got, we've got two focuses, a short rest, a walk, a weak attack, and retaliate. He's probably coming for us, so I'm going to want to guard against that. So that's two. Boom, boom. We now have four. Let's go for a furious strike. Just in case, you know, just in case we're gonna we're gonna want to do that. Uh, boom! That bumps us down to zero. Now, this stuff all gets put back into play. So now it is Hans's turn, and he's going to 
run. I mean, he can see me, but he also knows there's a bunch of kids in this house. So he's probably going to target one of those. He's targeting Clarence again. He really doesn't like Clarence. Nobody likes Clarence. All right. Terror card. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, Clarence. The horror level moves up one. Ouch. He's going to walk in here and take out Clarence. Oh. Sorry, Clarence. And his bloodlust is going to go up a bit. And boom. Okay. So because of that, we now have to go move the terror level or the horror level up one more. Fun. Neato. Panic phase. These two scream and panic, but what are they going to do if I, uh, so it says one through three, they leave. Otherwise, they're going to stay in the house, probably run upstairs, because that's always the smart thing to do. Here's what's going to happen for this first one. That is Ryan. Ryan is going to <laughs> run upstairs like a fool. Uh, and his girlfriend... Uh, Blinthia is going to run away because she's smart. Good job, Blinthia. Now we got to do our upkeep, and there's still tarot cards. We don't need to resolve any of this stuff. And let's jump right in. Oh, this needs to be moved back up to six. Okay, it's now our turn again. And we have some cards to play with now. Okay, okay. We got some things to do. We got some things we can do. A horror level is getting a little funky. Don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. I want to be able to keep rolling with two dice. Okay, so that's a six. Oop, that's a six and a three. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I'm going to... I already have a furious strike. So I'm going to probably get rid of my weak attack and my other focus. So I'm going to get rid of those two to bump this into a success, which gives us two time, boom, boom, and it brings the horror level down one. Let's just all just take a breath, calm down. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it is for some people, but it's not the end of the world for us yet. And now what else am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and walk. Yeah, I'm going to walk. I want to try and save Blinthia. All right. Here we go. Oof a doof. That is not good. Um, yeah, OK. I, I don't want to get rid of some of these cards, so bumped, bumping it down to six, and we're going to, we tripped and skinned our knee, but we got to move one space. Goody. All right. Uh, I do not like that we are down to health. That is scary, so we're also going to short rest. All right, let's see what that does. Okay. We get, uh, sure, I'll take it. We get one health back. We also lose a little bit of time. And that is our turn. Not a whole lot we can do. But we can purchase things now. So let's do that. First, we'll take our walk. Gotta have it. Um, we gotta start convincing people to let us into their houses. So if we're taking a convince, that's gonna bump us down to four. I'm going to take a sprint. Sprint moves us down to two, and then I'm going to grab two close calls. Yeah. And that is everything. Go ahead and put sprint back on the board. We'll move these guys off the board. And now it is Hans's turn. Now, Bill ran upstairs. You know you're not supposed to do that in a horror movie. Uh, and that's why he targets Bill and he kills Bill. <laughs> Uh, Bill's dead, and of course the bloodlust moves up just a bit more. Uh, luckily, Blinthia is still outside, and now we get to flip over a terror card. 
They told us to hide. Uh-oh. All right, horror level moves up one. Then place one new victim in each house that is not connected to a door and then play an event card. Okay, so we got a victim now in oh, <laughs> the Smalley's house, but then they burn. So there's just an extra person in there. Uh, we've got a new one in here. A new one in here. And a new one. Oh, I'll lay him down so you guys can see him. And then a new one. Actually, there was someone in the house with Bill and Clarence and Blinthia. Uh-oh. Something tells me Hans is going to get them too. And then you play an event card. So let's play this event card. And I'm not going to cover up the friendly neighbors because I want to remind, remind myself that I get an extra die. Uh, but I know what happens with the fire. All right, what's going on over there? Blocked motion on Maple Lane. I'm going to go see what's up. Place one. Oh, boy. Place one new victim on each door or exit space. So we're running out of our victim cards or victim pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and steal them from the dead pile. Boy, howdy. That's, uh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. So next there is a panic phase, and this guy does panic. He's freaking out. He does not like that. And he is going to uh, stay in the house anyway. He's hiding under the bed. Uh, Everyone knows that you can't hide under a bed when there's a slasher on the loose, but still gonna try. Upkeep phase, boom, still terror cards. Uh, um, and that is all we need to do for upkeep. Hey, this is gonna get pretty bad pretty fast. We're gonna we're gonna take a chance. We're gonna sprint. I want to save some people. All right. Oh, darn. All right, that was not a very good roll at all. Luckily, I'm going to use a close call and get rid of this one and replace it with a success. All right, so we're sprinting. We are sprinting. Um, but, let's see, one, two. I want to move three spaces. You know what? I'm going to instead, yeah, I I'm going to take the time hit, which I don't want to do, and re-roll this die too because I don't want to get rid of any of these call these cards because I kind of need them all except for walk I could get rid of walk but so come on success ouch that was very much not a success at all so I'm going to go ahead and play another close call to re-roll that die oh jeez um, well, that didn't help me even a little bit. I just wasted a close call. Cool. Okay, so I can move two spaces, though. And the time does go down. Ouch. That was not good. That was very much not good. So I'm gonna go ahead and move into this space with Blinthia. And then I'm going to walk her and this looky Lou who just showed up. Yes! All right. Unfortunately, time goes down again. All right. All right. So with two successes, I can move two spaces, which is awesome because I then bring Balinthia with me over to this looky Lou who doesn't get a name because you, when there's a killer in the street, you don't just walk up and go, hey, what's going on? So we're gonna go ahead and save both of them because you can save up to, you can take two people with you, uh, but you can also save as many people that are on an exit spot as you can, as long as you are on that spot. I'm going to gain a health back, thank goodness, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take an action card and, I'm going to take the 
search function. Now I'm going to convince Bill to let me in. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go check out this party because I can do a lot more at that party. And since we are rolling, we've got friendly neighbors in this neighborhood, I'm gonna get three die. Fingers crossed I get three successes. That would be awesome. Oh, I'll take two, though. I'll take two. Boom. So I get to go in here. And no other issues happen. But I am going to search in here. Okay, yeah. I don't really need to see too much more. Um, all right, so I'm getting a Bible. I put a Bible in my backpack. That will help me uh, when uh, I get to convince people. All right, so that'll actually help me a lot for convincing. All right, that that's good. That's very good, actually. Awesome. Okay, uh, and then that is my turn. Now, a hefty turn. Eesh. Oof a doof. Okay, at the end of my turn, I'm going to go ahead and put the, all these zero cost cards back. Oh, it was all zero cost cards. Okay. Move these over here for next round. Okay, now it is Han's turn, and unfortunately, this person who's hiding under the bed was not good enough, and it's that scene where they're like hiding, and they're looking, and they see like the feet pass by the bed, and then they think they're okay, and they think they're gone. And then the head pops down, and they're like, ah! This person gets killed by Han's. Oof. Which means that the bloodlust meter goes up. He's still slow, but now he's super powerful. One hit from him, and I lose three health. On top of that, on top of it, boom, horror level goes up. Now things are getting a little intense. Things are getting scary. This whole house is gone. Blinthia got out, but the rest are gone. Um, now let's put the tarot card. Oh no. Oy. Oy, oy, oy. Not good. The horror level is at a max. We are down to one die. We can only roll one die from here on out. Um, and on top of that, he's going to target, let's see, one, two, three, or one, two, three. I'm just going to say narratively and not, totally not because I want him to go after me. He's coming after the party. He's coming to the party. All right. So he goes one, two, and he can't kill. Oh, well, he can't kill anyone anyway. All right. So there's Hans. He's just right outside waiting for me. Or the panic phase first. No one's panicking. Everyone's dead. No tarot card, or there's still tarot cards left, so that's not an issue. I'm not going to do, I'm going to keep Lori's bow out. I don't need to be holding the Bible. There's no hand icon on the Bible. That means that I can just keep it in my backpack, and it still works. However, I do need hands to hold the bow and arrow, just like my little miniature's holding. So, um, nothing else to do in the upkeep phase. We're going to bump that up here. Uh, things are getting hairy here. I cannot move because I don't have anything to move with. I'm just kind of waiting for him to get here. Uh, so that's my turn. All right, so I'm taking a plan or a distraction and an improvise, and that'll bump me down to zero. Okay, yeah, that's what I'll do. Now it's Hans's turn. He's going to see that I'm in this house party trying to convince everyone there's a killer right outside your door. There's nothing he can do, so he's not going to attack, but 
then this happens. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh, this isn't good at all. In fact, this is very bad. He targets one of the party goers. He walks in and he just starts swinging. He kills this one first, Mark, and Mark's sister, it's sad for the family, uh, Regina. Mark and Regina are now dead. The bloodlust meter goes up two, which means boom, boom. That means that he now does three damage and he can move two spaces for every movement that he gets. However, because we passed this threshold, his dark power is revealed. The Sledgehammer Massacre. For every kill, Hans attacks you and each victim in his space once. Okay, well luckily, that was after <laughs> this. Um, unluckily, because of that, for each victim killed during the killer phase, bum bum. Mm. The horror level doesn't go up at all, thankfully, because it's as high as it can go. He still moves two spaces, and he now does four. So if he attacks me once, it's pretty, it's almost lights out. It's almost lights out if he attacks me once. This is getting intense, okay. <laughs> oh. Let's panic, huh? Let's do the panic phase. What are these people doing? Let's roll three. Three die. Ooh, Hans, no. All right, so, oh, it's only a one or two for them to leave. Okay, well, one of them is smart and runs the freak out of there. All right. All right. All right. There are still two in there, and Hans is going to kill everyone. This is bad. This is very, very bad. I can only roll one die right now because the horror level is so high. It's it's scary up in in this mother. All right. Um. There's nothing we need to resolve. There's still terror cards, everything. Okay. So now I'm going to have to do some things. I'm going to, I can only roll once. So I'm going to, well, I can only roll one die, which is horrible. I'm gonna improvise. Let's improvise, huh? Yes. Okay. So for the next horror roll, all threes and fours are successes, okay? That improves our, uh, so now we're going to try and clear some of this up. We got two thirds chance of this going well. We're gonna distract him. Yes. Okay. Horror level goes down one. Whew. All right. So we can roll two dice again. At least we've got that. And on top of that, we get a an extra time. Good. I'll take it. All right. Now, since we can roll two dice, I'm going to swing at this guy, right? Like, this is bad. We are in a bad situation, and I don't have a whole lot of actions I can take. I'm gonna swing at him. I'm gonna do a furious strike. With two dice. Oof! You know, I really am gonna need these, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I will take the one, so I, I hit him once. Boom. Take that, Hans. 
We moved the horror meter down one. Good. We need that. Although it's about to go back up. It's going to be bad news bears. That's the end of our turn, too. That's the end. Because of that. Okay. So that's the end of our turn. However, we do have seven. First off, we're going to grab up all of these. And we got to start doing some damage to this guy. So with seven, take a critical blow and a close call. Could probably do better things. I should probably plan it out more. Ooh, should I plan it out more? Nah. This is where it breaks bad. It's Hans's turn. He's got the Sledgehammer Massacre Dark Power now, which means he's going to target me, and he's going to take a swing, all right? However, I am going to retaliate, because his swings hit hard right now. One swing from him, and it puts me down to one health. I'm going to retaliate. Oof. Oof. Gonna play that close call that I just uh, I just had because that was not good. Um, oh, 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 well, on the plus side, I at least got that. So I can, I'm gonna get rid of, <laughs> I'm gonna need a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna get rid of my focuses, right? How many walks do I have? I'm gonna get rid of one walk, one focus. One walk, one focus was my uh, retaliate, was what I tried to do. That reduces the attack by two and it does one damage. So instead of hitting me for four, he hits me for Two. However, because of his Sledgehammer Massacre, he also attacks these two and just kills them right out. And bumped this up two, which increases the horror level one. And now he does five damage. Uh, and now let's do a terror card. This is, we're getting close to the end game. This is about the end. Oh, if there are no victims on, he kept swinging his hammer and killing and killing. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, pick a victim, walk to him and kill him. He's going, wow. He's gonna go over here, he's gonna walk right out and kill this person. There's that lucky look. Or there's that person who panicked out of the house party. They didn't make it. And then, now that he's killed that, uh, he, whoop. So now he gets uh, a heart back. Oh. And then now he's going to go kill Bill. Why not? Right? Because... We mentioned him earlier. We had that cool moment of tension where he's like, no, never mind, not that guy, he's sad. Uh, and then he just decides, no, instead I'm gonna, all right. So then, uh, hoy. Now, Hans recovers health. He's got full health, so he doesn't recover anymore. Um, okay. That's the end of Hans's turn. And things are going bad for us. It's our turn now, because there's still a tarot card. One left. Um, oh, and Bloodlust did not go up. It did not go up. I thought it went up, but it did not. Or the horror meter did not go up. So we got that going for us, which is nice. I'm going to take a short rest. I need a short rest, for the love of all that is holy. Oh, that is a good short rest. I don't know why I'm napping when this killer's just killing everyone in the neighborhood. But, uh, yeah. 
I'll take it. All right, what else can we do? Let's focus, huh? Let's focus and get some, some of that time back from our close call with the Italian. All right. Eh, I'll take it. We didn't get much time back, but we lowered the horror level just a bit, which is helpful. Okay, so we've got three, three time to spend. We're gonna spend it on sprinting and a close call, because close calls are gonna be important. All right. So that's spent, all that is spent. Now it is time to do the killer. He's going to target me and he can't slash at me. Thank God. However, oh no. Unholy speed and extra health. This is where we die, basically. All right. So we just unlocked a minor dark power of Hans's, which means he can move one extra space. So now he can move four spaces at a time. And he also now has two additional health. Three. Oh, and what do you know? That's the end of the terror deck, which means we are in the end game. So we flip this over. This is the finale. Dark, darker, darkest. Draw a second dark power card when this is revealed. Are you... Wait. So now he basically... <laughs> he'll target someone, he'll move six spaces, and then attack. And we have to draw a second dark power card. So with our other dark powers... Alright, so we gotta draw a new one. Just kinda mix these up so I don't know. And shabam, dark obsession. Whenever Hans attacks you at least once, he attacks an additional time. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs> this is me dead now. Okay. Okay. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. It's fine, it's fine. So it's my turn. There's no panic phase. He doesn't kill anyone. He didn't move. He moves now, but he didn't move. <sighs> I don't have a whole lot I can do. All right. I may mess something up. I don't know, but it doesn't matter because we're all about to die. All right. We're going to sprint. We're going to sprint out of there. And we're gonna move two spaces. One, two, and then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna walk. And we're going to try and enter this house where all that carnage happened. And we can, however it costs us one. All right, so we're gonna walk in here. Oh, wait, just realized I don't have a search, so that does me no good. Well, I guess we're gonna walk this way. <laughs> Kinda have to at this point. All right, <clears throat> and on that note, we're about to get killed pretty viciously. We've got five things to spend on. We're gonna get a, a retaliate, pick up a close call, and we're gonna grab these two. And now it's Hans's turn, and he's gonna target me because the closest thing there is. He's gonna go. And he can hoof it. He can go six spaces. And he's going to attack, which would kill me. However, I'm going to guard. <laughs> oh, no. That was not good. This is, this is it, this is the end of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna play a close call. I'm gonna reroll both back. We'll take the time hit. Nice, okay. Well, it was something. 
Uh, that will reduce it by two. So instead of hitting me for five, he's gonna hit me for three, which means I still have two health, except for his dark obsession, uh, which means he attacks me again. And this time I'm going to retaliate. Please, please, please. Okay, well, to stay alive, I'm going to go ahead and this may be the end of me. This may have been a big mistake. I'm just going to re-roll one of these and hope that I get... Yes! I get a six! Okay, I get that, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my, uh, my focus and my walk. Which means, since I get rid of those two, that gives me two successes. I ignore all the, the damage to the attack, and I do two damage to him. But I bam! Take that, Hans. Oh, wait, no, I do. I guess I remove these two. Dang it, so now he's back to normal. He's just his normal self. And I am knocking on death's door here. All right, there's not much left to do here. It's my turn again. And now I'm going to... Let's do a critical blow against Hans. Come on. Fives and sixes. Well, okay. Shucks. Oh, hey! But they're all... I'll take it. Horror goes down. One. Um, and... He takes two damage, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, and on this one, he's right here with me, uh, and he attacks, which uh, I can't do anything to defend myself. That and, okay, so this right here is the, 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 the close call, the final, the final uh, moment of the film. Did he kill me? Yes, he did. It's blank, it's blank, it's nothing. He did kill me, I'm dead. We're all dead, fun times. Well, <sighs> unfortunately, in the center of town with a pile of dead bodies, Hans eventually got a hold of Lori and he killed her. Poor Maple Lane, like the house is burnt down and there's easily, I don't know how many people dead. Uh, 15 people are dead. It, it was a rough one. It was a rough one. Let's see if Hans would have come back to life if we attacked him. No, he wouldn't have either. So that, there's that. Anyway, uh, so that is uh, our take on Halloween for, for Final Girl. It's a really fun game. It's frustrating when you don't win. Uh, obviously, it's hard to win. That's the whole purpose of the game, especially with someone like Hans, who's just constantly stalking you and coming at you. Um, I adore this game. Like I said, all of the versions of the game, all the different movies, including season two, which I haven't played yet. I'm really excited. Season two has stuff like Alien and The Thing and some like those classic 80s horror that, or 80s sci-fi horror, I should say. Um, but yeah, so they've got all sorts of movies. I believe there's five in each of them. Those boxes are all put apart. Uh, it's a blast to play. Everything is available on areyougame.com, including these play mats and these cool miniatures. You can get one for each season. This is the season one. Oh, I guess there's, there's six. Terror from Above. I have not played Terror from Above. Which one is that? 
don't even know which one Terror from Above is. Uh, but they are all included here. There's 20 of them. Uh, some of them, like Carnival of Blood, I believe, has uh, like this creepy uh, like Geppetto villain that has little mini puppets that are also on the board that go around attacking people, kind of like Puppet Master, if you've ever seen that movie. Uh, but yeah, it is such a fun game. It's thematically on point throughout, like you can tell from all the different cards and even from the quotes on the terror cards, you can tell they did their research into the horror genre. Uh, it's, it's a love letter to those classic horror movies, especially when you're playing against Hans because he's your traditional slasher. There's lots of fun things that they do with the other uh, ones like for instance Maple Lane if you're going up against uh, Dr. Fright they have this fun mechanic where you're either asleep or you're awake and if you're awake he can't attack you or uh, but he can not attack the victims however if you're asleep he can attack you and you can attack him you can't attack him when you're awake but they have this fun mechanic where if you're asleep, you have to reveal, you have a small deck of four cards, it's the boiler room, and you have to reveal parts of a card at a time, and whether or not you do will determine whether or not he attacks you, or you get out of the boiler room and wake up. It's so much fun, it's really cool, and I love the fact that it's modular and you can play different killers in different scenarios. All of the games, the boards for the games, are part of the box. You pop off pieces of the box. You wanna play as this killer? Boom, here's your killer. You wanna play in Creech Manor? So Creech Manor is an interesting one. It's a house. So imagine Hans just in the house and you're running all over the house to try and get away from him. It's so much fun and there's endless possibilities because you have so many different combinations of killer and location and character in your final girl that you can honestly just get replayability, 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 which is good since it's a one player game and more often than not, you'll be by yourself than with other people and you want to play a game and if you're not around any other people, you got to play a game by yourself. This allows you to play that game over and over and over again. It's a lot of fun. Check it out on areyougame.com. Thank you so much for watching this. I know it was a bit of a longer video, but yeah, that's how it goes sometimes with these complicated board games. If you like this video, please give us a like, give us a subscribe. It helps so much with the algorithm and getting our name out there. Uh, and I just have one last question for you. Are you game? Dot com. You like that video? Why don't you give it a like? Maybe head on down to the comments and tell us what you liked about it. Ooh, better yet, you can click this button right here to subscribe. Or maybe you want to check out some more of our videos with this button. And if those buttons have been disabled in the future and I'm just kind of doing this randomly, just use your imagination. Okay, bye, love you.